Wash away my troubles, wash away my pain with a big shumble up. One with my songs, one with my pain with the shumble up. San Jose. So I've got a story and I've got a request. Now, I, uh, I bet everyone in here uh, has something they want to do. Uh, maybe it's a, a goal, maybe it's a dream, but you haven't got to it yet. So my request today is that you kind of take in my story a little bit and relate it to your own life, all right? So, um, well, I would love to be able to say that my beginnings uh, started out happy, but um, they did not. My beginning actually started with two tragedies. There are two distinct different places. One was South America, Bogota, Colombia, and she there was a woman that was 16 years old that found herself pregnant. Now, uh, you know, we've, we've heard that story before, but her parents were disgraced. And they basically said, and they wrote it in a letter, that she's no longer part of the family, that she needs to leave. She needs to leave the country and deal with it. They gave her two options. One was to put the baby in the trash and leave it, and two was to give it away. Thankfully, uh, she chose number two. Um, now, her aunt actually took her to Mexico, Hermosillo, Mexico, where she had the baby and gave it to a mission. Now, tragedy number two actually happened uh, here in the Bay Area, Santa Rosa, California, which is about uh, an hour north of San Francisco and wine country. There was a young couple who had a beautiful little girl. Her name was Jennifer. And she was diagnosed with a nerve disease. So what ended up happening was she ended up dying at two years old. So just imagine that for a second. Anybody with kids in here knows that kind of devastation. So my, my dad's side of the family uh, had this uh, connection with this mission. And the doctor said, hey, you know what, you guys can't have kids. If you do, there's a one in four chance that you will have this happen again. So they decided to adopt. And as luck would have it, they adopted me. Um, little uh, peach string fellow up there um, at five days old. So uh, right away, my life starts off as an adventure. Um, and it hasn't really slowed down. But here's the thing. They weren't out of the woods yet. Right? They found out I was blind and I was going completely blind. So I was legally blind my entire childhood. And the eye doctor basically said, we're really lucky. Because if you hadn't got him here to the doctors, he would be completely blind. So I could see light. And I do remember the tests, you know, take off your glasses, take everything off. Here's a good old picture of the old glasses there uh, as a little boy. Um, I remember them saying, hey, look at, the, look at the chart. You know those charts with the E and all the, and all the different letters? I remember them putting one letter up, and I couldn't see it. I would guess. I'd be like, hold on, t just a second. I'm, uh, I'm thinking it's a nine, you know. Um, that happened to me in my colorblind test uh, as well. So I'm also colorblind. But, um, you know, so how lucky am I to be in America, for one, right? and to also not be completely blind. So again, it's just this adventure. Now, we wanted you know, more kids. I know I wanted a big brother, and I wanted you know, all that good stuff, because they had, uh, my parents wanted to adopt more kids. And lucky me, I did. I got an older brother. And this is my older brother here. <laughs> <laughs> Getting me with a lightsaber. We were really st into Star Wars. Um, 
He's an amazing person. He actually, uh, right now, is a bodyguard for uh, Lindsay Lohan. So he's a really good guy. <laughs> and I'm not even joking. Just saying. So uh, as time went on, we wanted, you know, we wanted a sister. And I was like, all right, I got a sister, all right. Well, we secured someone in the same hospital that I was born in. Actually, the doctor who delivered me, his son delivered our little brother. So didn't come out as a serious We took him anyways, and um, there he is right there in the center, uh, little Joe. So, you know, we have a Mexican, we have um, uh, African-American and slash Filipino, and little Colombian P Pete, uh, which we still don't know um, exactly uh, what I am nationality-wise. Uh, I have two kids, and they're both blonde hair, blue eyes. So <sighs> who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But, uh, you know, the moral of the story is we were really close, actually. We all became really close. I've won so many bets in high school that, uh, <laughs> you know, no, that's my brother. No, it's not. I'll bet you $10. <laughs> we whip out our IDs. Boom. Same address. And uh, many bets. I, few, few people still owe me 10 bucks, but that's all right. <laughs> so as time went on, um, I was literally, you know, six months old, and my parents knew I was musical. Uh, I would basically play drums, drum patterns, on the milk cartons in the barn. We had a dairy farm. And so, it's a great story. She always tells it. But Grandpa and my mom were milking cows, and they both stopped and looked over, and there I was playing some drums, six months old. So rather than being you know, frightful of those kinds of things. Like, they actually encouraged me with my music stuff. And so by the age of nine, I was taking drum lessons, as you see here, in elementary school, with my buddy Holly Look. Uh, and so that's another blessing to me, because I was already really passionate about music at that time. But I wanted to get more into songwriting. I wanted to get more into creating music. You know, as a drummer, you get to do the beat, but you don't, it's not as much of a songwriting thing, right? So I started picking up the keyboards, and I started learning by ear. And I knew right out of high school that I wanted to go to college for music. Now, I'm sure everybody here has heard that cliche, right? If you, you follow your dreams as a musician, or you go to college, right? We've heard that all before. But when I do talks like this, that's one of the things that I completely disagree with. I think that Getting an education is extremely important, and in this competitive world today, especially in music, the more you can have an edge, the better. So I practiced what I preached, and I went to college, got an AA degree, continued on to get my BA degree in music composition, as well as getting a BA in recording arts. So I wanted to compose, I wanted to record, and then, of course, the internet was coming about, and I wanted to be a geek. So I decided to stay and get my master's degree in multimedia. But along the way, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be an artist. So I eventually found my calling as doing country music. It's what, they, it's what I listen to at the barn. It's what we listen to at home. Um, but of course, in high school and all these other uh, times in my life, I wanted to rebel and do rap, and I wanted to do you know, rock. I wanted to do all these different things. But as an artist, you kind of find what makes most sense to you. But again, I had the geek side of me, and I had all these different genres that I had experience in. And now, I had this college education. So I'm pumped. So I'm ready. I got a record deal with a band that I was writing for. I got lucky, right? We got a record deal, and we thought, hey, we've made it. But little did we know, that's not exactly what that means. Getting a record deal is only part of the puzzle. So the, the, this is actually a rap group that I was producing, which meant I was doing all the music for it. And they were a great label under uh, Sony Records, great people. But their direction for their label changed, which meant we got dropped. So blood, sweat, and tears. This is the time I was getting my master's degree, and I was commuting several, several hours to the studio, spending the night working on these tracks. So the group was devastated. They, they, they broke up. But like many times in my life, there have been times when I could give up, and I don't. The label ended up getting defunct, too. They, were, they, went, they went belly up. But I was able to get the masters to my songs, which meant I got the rights to my songs. 
So when everyone had quit, I took those songs and I got them to Hollywood. And I got, again, very lucky. Within 30 seconds of hearing one of my songs that I had produced with this group, um, they wanted to sign me to a single song deal, which ended up multiplying over the years. And I'm happy to report that a lot of those songs are in major motion pictures, television. Um, in fact, we went over 100 this year. So, you know, it's, you get lemons. You, I mean, I know that's a cliche, but you know what? Lemonades. Lemonade is a wonderful drink, and I encourage you all to drink it, because you will all get lemonade. You, know, you will all get lemons in your life, I guarantee you. So, um, as an example, this is a, a show on CBS called Becker. And sometimes the music just happens, and your publisher calls, hey, you got a motion picture, great, and you go and you watch the movie, and you don't know where it's coming. But this particular instance, this is a CBS show, Ted Danson actually interacts with the music, which is kind of fun. So take a watch. Hey, or should I say yo? Either turn down that stereo or roll up your windows, or better yet, get the hell out of here. I don't care if you taste the music as MC, rap, daddy, dog, whatever. Just don't force me to listen to it. You know, I don't drive by his house and blast James Taylor, do I? So, there you go. That's a, a quick example. So, I mean, you know, rap music and I'm a country guy, right? Kind of weird. Um, but what I learned um, over the years is that having these different experiences with these different genres, um, as Calhoun talked about this morning, um, is that, you know, there is a blurry line, and I love music, period. But as an, a writer and a, a record producer, I want to get my feet wet in all of it. I love it all. But as an artist, as a singer, I sing country music, right? So even growing up, I was doing beatbox, as you, as you saw, and I integrate uh, an old song, Shambhala, uh, and beatboxing, um, which got me into trouble in school, by the way, a ton. We won't get into that. Um, but so this, this idea of having this creative life, um, and right now, at this point in my career, I was uh, excited because I had some success. I had a, sh a song on the Ultimate Fighting Championship before it became huge and had some cuts with this publisher. So um, the next step, logical step for a country artist is to go to Nashville, Tennessee, which I did. Moved there in 97 and began pursuing that. And all the, t all the while, I was getting jobs with these firms. So I was doing creative for these companies. So during my, my day job, I was being creative. And then I was pursuing my country music career. And I went there, I, I thought, hey, I got this. I got this. You know, I've got my education. I've, got, I've been paying my dues. We're good. And it was my first recording session that I was extremely humbled. I was passing out the charts to the band, and they all started erasing everything I did. And it was, oh, wow. Not in Kansas anymore, Toto, that's for sure. So I found out they have their own system, the Nashville number system. So I had a lot of learning to do even after I got to Nashville, Tennessee. So the creative stuff was great because I was able to put my multimedia that I learned in my masters to good use. I, would, I didn't have to be there washing dishes. I didn't have to be there as, you know, doing things I didn't want to do. I was able to be creative, right? So it was fantastic. So the good news is that I was able to, over the years, get gr fantastic clients that I w got to work with. I still do work for, like HP and Microsoft and um, Target. And the great thing about that is I have a parallel path with my career. So I'm able to be creative with video, websites, you know, other audio projects, right? And still do my country music. And so that's a, just a wonderful thing. And so what we're going to do is something a little different that we've never done before. I did an ad for uh, Target, and they called... I've done some stuff for them, and they say, if we got this commercial, we want you to edit it. We don't think the footage is going to work out because he's too shaky, and the sky's gray, and yada, yada, yada. I said, no problem. I'll take care of it for you. Then I get the call. Well, we're struggling with music. I'm like, well, I, I could probably help with the music. No problem. So I ended up composing an original score to the video I edited, and this just aired a couple weeks ago. So um, before I move to the next slide, I'd like to introduce a good friend of mine who's actually part of my band. His name is Tommy Guns. 
Come on out, Tommy. And what we're going to do, um, I wrote this for a woman, and you'll know why I had to say that, uh, because the lyrics, uh, well, you know, you listen to them and you find out. It's for a, <laughs> it's for a bathing suit uh, ad, as you can see. And a good friend of mine, uh, Kristen McNamara, sang this uh, vocal. And I played all the instruments on it, and it just aired, as you can see, a couple weeks ago. And what we're going to do is we're going to play to the commercial and try to time it just right. So hopefully it's not a train wreck, and here we go. As an artist, I've been able to do some really fun uh, things, like personal things. I've been able to live dreams. I've been able to play with musicians I read about growing up. Um, we opened for just this year, um, Charlie Daniels and uh, Clint Black and Randy Travis. And so along with all these wonderful credits to movies and TV, I've been living out my dream. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So one thing is, I always heard these, these, you know, these songs about places. I was thinking, well, why not my place? Why not my home? So I saw an opportunity. I said, hey, I want to write the theme song to my hometown, which, as you know, um, is Santa Rosa, California. So I decided to write this and produce it. I uh, wrote it with a good friend of mine, Glenn Dawson. And uh, radio picked it up, and it, went, it did really, really well. And so we're going to play an acoustic version for you right now. Uh, here it is, Santa Rosa. hope you like it. Sonoma County, baby. Just a little north of the Golden Gate, about the Rolling Hill, growing grapes with the sun wind, chase the fog away. Down a couple blocks and to the right is where Charlie Brown sleeps at night. Sleepy dog still dreams away the day. We'd ride our bikes in the summer heat, hunt the cold ads in the county creek, and hit the hay barn to play hide and seek. Santa Rosa, the bruise is in the final wine. We'll run through this blood of mine. The We were pulling the band while we pulled a one. Took a shot off, just having fun on a summer day. Late afternoon, way in Berlin, from Pounder High, waved us down and said, I need a ride. But there's a party on the beach, let's all go to. And then it's in the cool, she took my hand. Taking me to Tennessee, my home will always 
be Santa Rosa. And now we have some kids and it makes me cry. Cause on the road the years fly by. It's hard to get back, but I've gotta try. Santa Rosa, come on now. Your bruises in fine wine run through this blood of mine. And though the road I'm on has taken me to Tennessee, my home will always be. But he's taking me to Tennessee, but my home. Santa Rosa. Thank you. All right. I don't need this anyways. So, uh, so now with that song, that opened a lot of doors. And... Uh, the gentleman I wrote that song with, I wrote my new single that um, just got recorded. So we're excited about it. You guys saw The Magician earlier, right? He was amazing, wasn't he? Well, this is a song that will hopefully fool you as well. Okay? It's called Pull Dance. Hope you like it. I'd love to be in a trance Not 
the fish are jumping for the chance to see a little pool dance, yeah, to see a little pool dance, yeah. I want, want, want to see a pool dance, yeah, yeah. I want to see a pool dance, yeah. Da 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 da. I'm an artist because I, I really, I really true, truly love what I do, and I'm very, very blessed. I know it. And you know what? What makes, what drives me? It's not things. It's not record deals. It's not any of that stuff. What drives me is you. Things you give back. When I write a song and I get letters back about how, what it means to them, or if it's an American soldier in Iraq writing me, you know, it's it's awesome. I get off on that, you know? And so I, I love it. And you know what? With the people, passion, possibilities, with that theme today, I sincerely wish everyone in here luck. <laughs>